right there, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be working on my 1989 Toyota pickup. Now, last time I drove this truck, uh, it started making some noise, sounded like maybe a front wheel bearing going out. And I know the front end needs some attention on this truck anyway, so I went ahead and did exactly what you're not supposed to do. And I have not diagnosed the problem at all. And I went ahead and ordered a bunch of parts. So I've got inner and outer wheel bearings for both sides on the front. I've got wheel seals. I've got upper and lower ball joints, inner and outer tie rods. And I also have a set of ball joint spacers. And we're going to be installing all of this on the truck. So I suppose the first thing we ought to do here, get the truck jacked up. All right, so now I've got the other side done. I really haven't touched this side other than taking the tire off and I hit some stuff with a little bit of lube here. But we're gonna go ahead and get started on this side. We're gonna do a few things. You don't necessarily have to do them this way, but I think it'll make it a little easier. We're gonna go ahead and take the shock out, get that out of the way. We're gonna disconnect this tie rod in. That way I can just move this around wherever I need to to get better access to the bolts. Then we're going to take the brake caliper off. Then we're going to disassemble the hub and take the wheel end stuff off. And then we're start uh, taking ball joints out and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, let's get to it. Well, I'm not really sure where I was at when the camera crashed. I just happened to look at the camera there and it was locked up. So, not sure how much of that I missed. So we're most of the way disassembled here now. Got to get everything cleaned up and start getting things ready to go back together. I'm going to go ahead and pull this rotor off of the hub. I'm not changing the rotors or the brakes. They're actually in pretty decent shape. But I want to go ahead and pull them off because I'm going to put this hub in the parts washer, which is full of diesel fuel to clean all the grease and everything out of it. So. Okay, now I've got the hub all cleaned up here. Now really, none of these bearings look anywhere near as bad as I would have expected for 
the sound that I heard, but you can tell that this one's definitely gotten hot. You can see that the rollers are all discolored as well as that race is discolored as well, but nothing's really chewed up. I think really probably because from the first time I heard the noise, I probably parked the truck within five miles and I haven't driven this truck for the last, oh, at least a month or two since I heard that noise because I didn't have time to get to it to fix it. So really none of these bearings were all real chewed up. None of them really seem to have excessive play in them, but I mean, they're, they definitely do need to be replaced but not really what I was expecting to see for the sound that I heard. So anyway, let's go ahead and we'll get these races knocked out of here. You can see these indentions in here where the race sit. That gives you a place to put your punch to knock the race out. Now to drive these races in, I'm just gonna use a seal driver set. Uh, this one says it's 81 millimeter. Fits that pretty good. You hear the sound change when it bottoms out. Go in here and look, make sure that it's seated all the way. Flip it over. Grab our new race from this side. Again, we're gonna check, make sure everything's clean. There's no dirt or anything in there that's gonna keep this from seating all the way. Sit that in there nice and flush. That one's a little too big. Yep, that one's just about right. Now we want to go ahead and we're, we're going to pack our bearing with grease. Get a nice good sized glob of grease in your hand there and then you're just going to take this bearing and you're going to start working that grease into the bearing And then you can see how the grease is starting to come out the other side there. Keep working your way around. Okay, now that we've got grease coming out the top all the way around, just go ahead and smear the rest around the outside there. Grab our bearing, put it in there, take our new seal.
Okay, now this hub's ready to go. I will still need to pack the outer bearing and put that in, but I'm gonna wait to do that until we're ready to assemble this on the spindle. I suppose next we'll start getting our CV axle put on, get our ball joints and all that stuff put together and go from there. All right, now here's the ball joint spacer. Now in order to make this fit like it's supposed to, you have to grind a little bit of material out of the back side of the upper control arm here. You can see that I had to grind some material out for this to fit in place. You're going to want to check and make sure that the grease fitting that you use is still going to be accessible with the spacer. Now the spacer is going to do a few different things for us. Now this is a torsion arm suspension. Right here is the torsion bar. It's connected to the upper control arm. So by spacing the upper control arm down, it's going to raise the vehicle a little bit. It's also going to increase the distance between the compression and the, the rebound bump stops here. So, so by doing that, it's going to gain us some wheel travel. Now, I'm not so much actually after the lift. I'm after the wheel travel. I'm going to install these, which is going to lift the vehicle, but then I'm going to relax the preload on the torsion bars to bring the right head back down to right about where it was, maybe just a touch bit higher, and I'm hoping to get a little bit better ride out of it. Seems like this thing's always banging off the bump stops, which creates a very uncomfortable ride at times, so that's why I'm installing these. But basically this is just going to install like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my new CV axle in place. So it's the next day here now. I almost don't even remember where I was, but it looks like I've got the ball joints installed. They're all fully installed. The spindle's back on. I've got the CV axle in, the washer, and the C-clip are on. Uh, it looks like I'm probably pretty much ready to start putting the hub back on, put the brakes back on. Still need to take the tie rod off, make sure that all this is loose before I disconnect that in there. So we we'll get all this stuff broke free and we'll measure the, the length so that we can set the new one pretty close. Then after all this is back together, we're still gonna be waiting on shocks and a couple other little parts to come in. But we can go ahead and get this down on the ground, get the right height set, and then we're just gonna ballpark the alignment here. We're not gonna spend a ton of time trying to get it perfect. This is gonna need adjustment to caster camber and toe i'm pretty sure of it so we're just going to get it ballpark and we're going to take it into an alignment shop and have them do the alignment on it that way they can get it all set just right but i don't want it to be so far out that they freak out when they put it on the alignment machine so we're going to try to get it just ballpark maybe when we take it in and get the alignment done maybe we'll get some new shoes as well uh, these tires here were on this truck before the engine went out. So these tires are, not only are these recap tires, but they're 10 years old or better now. So 
even though they still got some tread on them they should really probably be replaced so maybe we'll get some new taters on it anyway let's get back to it uh let's uh go ahead and get the hub installed bearings back in and all that good stuff so already got my inner bearing grease packed and my new seal on so we can just go ahead and slide this in place like so i've already got this bearing grease packed so go ahead and put that on there and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to over tighten the wheel bearing while spinning the hub that helps make sure that everything is seated properly and back it off just gonna set it basically finger tight there Okay, so now what we've done here is we've just set up a dial indicator on here. And okay, went ahead and zeroed that out, and then we're gonna pull, push in, two thousandths, zero. So we got about two thousandths of end play on our wheel bearing, so I'm good with that. We're gonna go ahead and put our lock nut on there. Then we're gonna tighten the lock nut down. Recheck our end play. We've only got about one thousandths of end play now, but I'm actually, I'm still okay with that. Go ahead and put this part of the hub back on. Put our cone washers back in, followed by a flat washer and a nut now these things don't need to be super tight by any stretch of the imagination okay, and then we've got these two washers and this nut go in the end of the CV Go ahead and install that. Then we've got our hub. We're gonna go ahead and move this to the free position here. We're just gonna put a light coating of grease on the gear teeth here. Now one thing that you're gonna have to pay attention to is on the back side here, there's two spots that are gonna have these little tangs that go into this gear here. Now on the, the hub here, you'll notice there's two that have this center gear tooth removed. These ones that got these little tangs have to line up to those two, otherwise this isn't gonna slide in. But, should just go in just like so and then we should be able to reinstall all of our bolts all right so wheel end stuff is basically all done just gotta bleed the brakes and hit the rotor with the little brake clean then uh, that's done so the next thing we're gonna need to do here is before I take this tie rod assembly off I want to check the length from the center to center there it looks like 13 and a quarter which is exactly what the other side was I've already taken my nuts loose and I want to go ahead and get this adjuster freed up before I pop this off just a little easier when you get something solidly holding the other end there so this has been soaking in some lube since I started on this but I'm guessing it's still going to give me some grief here Go ahead and
and freaking camera issues. <sighs> Frustrating when you do a bunch of stuff and then you look at the camera and it's not recording or it's locked up or whatever. But anyway, new tie rods are on. Measured the length. They're set where they used to be. Obviously, we're going to need to make some adjustments here when this thing's on the ground again. But that's basically all that stuff done. Now the next thing to look at here is, you can see we've got a pretty severe CV joint angle on uh, on this at full droop. Now to make that a bit better, we're going to install some spacers that are going to drop the differential down and make that CV angle a little bit better. So we get on that here next. All right, now to do the, the diff drop, we're going to need to take these mounting points loose with these bushings. Uh, there's 19 millimeter socket bolt here, uh, nut on top, bolt on the bottom. We're going to need to take that loose and then we'll drop this down. Then we've got some spacers that are going to install above this. And yes, I do realize that I have a rear main seal leaking on this. That is going to be a project for another day. So. This thing might fall on me. Let's uh, just put a jack under that. Now with the other one started, I should be able to lower my jack here. Get it out of the way. If I can twist this thing the right way. that back up all right so the differential spacers are in uh, they were kind of a pain to install because they, they space the back mounts down, but they don't move the front mount. And so that throws all the bolt hole alignments off, and it was kind of a pain to get the bolts back in, but had to take the front mount here loose, and then I was able to get it all bolted in. It's going to be fine. It did make the CV angles better. There's no longer any bind at all at full droop, full lock either direction. Uh, they're was initially a little bit of bind in there and it took care of that and keeping in mind too that this is the most extreme angle that this stuff's going to ever be at and when it is at this angle it's just going to be momentary so i'm pretty happy with that uh, i wish it would have fit a little better but it is what it is this kit that i bought with the ball joint spacers and the diff drops and all that stuff i mean it, i think it was under 100 bucks or right around 100 bucks or something like that so it is what it is. But anyway, I think uh, we're ready to put tires back on and get this thing on the ground and set our ride height. Now one thing I noticed right away after putting the wheels and tires back on setting it on the ground is I do believe I'm going to need some rims with a different offset because that tire is way too close to that upper control arm there. They're not touching, but they're way too close for comfort, so. Looks like this is gonna be getting a different set of rims. Otherwise, it actually looks really good just as it is. It's had a little bit of a nose high stance, but we're gonna bring the front end down just a little bit. I think we're gonna pull this thing outside drive it around the lot just a little bit here, set a little suspension out, and while it's outside, go ahead and get the shop cleaned up a little bit here, 
And then uh, we will work on dialing in our ride height. All right, so I just finished throwing an alternator on here because it decided to quit charging on me. Luckily, I had a good used one sitting here in the shop, so I tossed that on. I've already pulled a lot of preload out of the torsion bars on the front end. The front end's still higher than the back. Got a little bit of that Carolina squat or whatever the hell you want to call it going on. Not really a big fan of that. But I am fairly happy with all the suspension geometry in the front. We're take a little bit out of the torsion bars. We're going to pull the front tire off. We're going to measure the back spacing. I'm probably just going to quick fabric cobble up a set of uh, longer rear shackles, bring the back of the truck up just a little bit. And then we're going to go run it around the yard again, settle the suspension out, and then we'll do a quick rough alignment on the front end. Okay, so here's your torsion bar adjustment. Uh, we're back here by the transfer case. You've got a bolt on this side, you've got a jam nut, and then the nut that adjusts it. Let's see if I can get you up in there a little better. There you go. So you jam nut and then the adjusting nut here. Now you can hold this with a wrench and turn it from the bottom side. I've just been able to grab it here, turn it from here. So yeah, give that, uh, we're going go forward. So approximately one full turn. Then I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to lock this jam nut down because we're going to call it good there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now backspacing and offset seem to confuse a lot of people, so I thought I'd give you a real quick rundown on this here real quick. Now I can tell just by looking at this that this is a positive offset rim. The offset refers to the location of the inside of the mounting flange to the center of the tire. So if we look at this rim, now you're gonna measure from the inside of where the tire mounts to the inside of the tire mounts. And just real rough here, this looks to be about a six inch rim. So zero offset would be three inches from the back side. And hopefully you guys can see this at that camera angle. But yeah, there's a good there's a good inch between the three inch measurement and the inside of the rim there. This is probably about a positive 23 millimeter offset on this rim. Now back spacing is the distance from the mounting flange to the back side of the rim. So looks like we're about a four and a quarter offset. Now you can see that that ball joint is just barely touching the tire so yeah you know, I'd like to have a an inch of clearance there so if we can get somewhere even three and a half inch offset would be plenty uh, or yeah three and a half inch back spacing. Sorry I, even I'm making this more confusing. Okay, so I've got the back end of the truck jacked up and it's supported by the frame on jack stands. I removed the stock three and a half inch shackles. Just whipped up some quick five inch shackles, or five and a half rather, out of some scrap metal laying around the shop. They're actually almost twice the thickness of the original one, so there's going to be plenty of strength there. And I got four of them here, and we're going to go ahead and install these. Now I am going to have to take this back apart soon, replace these bushings as they're all shot, but should come apart a lot easier next time. Just 
because it's been apart recently, pop this apart and throw some new bushings in there, throw it back together, not a big deal. Did help level the truck out a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and drive this around the yard here a little bit and get the suspension settled, do a rough alignment on the front, and then this is going to go outside and wait for perch for a little while. Suspension travel is not too bad. Probably gonna regret driving through some deep snow with the being that I gotta still adjust the front suspension. It's now all packed with snow, but yeah. That's how you settle the suspension. All right, so like I said, we're just gonna do a super, super rough alignment on here. We're not going for precision, but got an angle finder on this square here. Looks like we're about negative half a degree camber on the passenger side front. Right about zero degrees camber on the driver side, so that's actually pretty close. You can use a little bit of cross camber to help uh, fight the crown of the road. So that, that's actually pretty darn close to where we want to be. I'll let the, the alignment shop set the final on that, but Let's go ahead and uh, rig up some string lines here and make a rough toe adjustment, get it fairly close. Okay, so basically what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna build the square box around the truck here. Now, we've got this piece of conduit here. You can see I've actually used this one before. I've got a couple marks on here already. I think uh, the other piece that I've used before on this got used for something else and then no longer have it so just gonna transfer some of these marks to something else okay so now basically what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to line your string lines up on your marks which are equal distances front and back so you get those lined up on those then you're gonna center up your string line from side to side on the front and the back. I think I should have this pretty close, so... Just gonna bump this way, about a sixteenth of an inch, so... Come on. Might have gone too far. So we went about an eighth of those ones. Pretty close. And then you're going to do the same thing on the rear. Pretty good. Now even though the rear toe is not adjustable on this truck being it's a live axle truck, when 
those of you guys that watched the revival video where I put this truck back together, you know that I cut this frame in half and welded it back together to shorten the frame up from a long wheelbase to a short wheelbase configuration to put this body on this frame. So we're gonna go ahead and check our rear toe here real quick. And we are on the money on our rear toe. So that means that I shortened this frame just right. Now let's go ahead and we'll check our toe on this front wheel. Double check that the steering wheel is straight. Now we've got a lot of toe out. Go ahead and check this side. Yeah, we've got about half an inch of toe out on both front wheels. So we're gonna go ahead and crank that in. Okay, so because we're towed out, we're gonna need to shorten the length on this tie rod here. And we are pretty even from side to side, so we're gonna try to make the same amount of adjustment on one side as we do the other. Okay, now after we've made our adjustments, we're right at a sixteenth of a toe in per side, which is an eighth of an inch of total toe, which is really right about where we want to be. So now basically I'm going to roll the truck back and forth, make sure that we don't have any binding tension on the tire and then uh, we'll re-square this quick, recheck it and hopefully we're good. We can lock it down and call that good enough. So we rolled it back and forth here, re-squared up our string lines and rechecked everything. And yeah, we're really close. I mean, right about a sixteenth of an inch toe in both sides, so about a quarter of an inch total toe. We started out at almost an inch of total toe, so this would definitely drive a lot better. You could probably drive this to the alignment shop, no problem. And because we are gonna take this in, get it aligned, uh, that's plenty close enough for, for what we're doing here. And I'm gonna go ahead and lock our tie rod adjustments back down. And we're gonna pull this truck outside and it's gonna sit a little while while we wait on parts. I was going to wait till got all the parts in, got this finished up to finish up this video, but I think this is going to end up being a really long video as it is, so maybe we'll do a separate shorter video on kind of buttoning up the odds and ends on this, spring bushings, shocks, uh, wheels and tires and that kind of stuff, and we'll do a separate video on that, and until next time, be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you. Have a great day.